What is going on ladies and gentlemen, AJ Good here at the House of Masks and these are five things that I want from Halloween Kills. Happy Halloween. So with all of the news to come out since the recent Halloween Kills test screening, I feel like the countdown is officially on. And granted, this countdown is a big countdown and will have many other sub-countdowns inside of it as we continue to ride the hype train on Halloween Kills. So it is going to get realer and realer as we go. We'll get a trailer for the film and everybody's gonna lose their fucking minds. It'll be October 1st before we know it and everyone will lose their fucking minds. So yes, the countdown is most definitely on. But before we go any further, I just thought that it would be nice to have an open discussion with you guys and give you my list of five things that I want and expect from Halloween Kills. Now the things that I'm about to say are just my opinions. Yes, everybody has different opinions and you are more than welcome to have a different opinion than me, but just know that there's a right and a wrong way to express that. So before a bunch of pussies get on here and start complaining in the weirdest ways possible, just remember these are my opinions. They aren't solidified facts and aren't expressed as such. This is just what I personally, me, AJ Good would like to see in Halloween Kills. So first of all, I just want to say that I loved Halloween 2018. I enjoyed it as much, if not more, than any other Halloween film in the franchise, and that's due to a couple different reasons. I think the biggest reason for this is that I got to see this movie in theaters and it didn't suck. I saw both of Rob Zombie's movies in theaters and, well, you know. I'm all broken up here, bitch. I can't work. The whore with the big tits hanging down to her Choke the chicken, purge my snorkel all over them flappy-ass tits. Bitch, I will crawl over there and I will skull fuck the shit out of you. Oh. That's all that fucker does is cry. And my three favorite films in the franchise, Halloween 2, Halloween 4, and Halloween 1, in that order, were all out well before I was even alive. So to be able to be a part of the Halloween 2018 hype train and just ride that thing out was really, really fun. All of that anticipation leading into a movie that I actually enjoyed and was not disappointed with was a really, really cool experience. And I don't personally ever remember having that feeling with a movie before, so. With all of that being said, my hopes are very high for Halloween Kills, and this is what I want to see. Number one. No twists. I get that the Sartain thing happened and a lot of the movie was built around that twist, but it just felt a little too try-hard. I was genuinely upset when I saw what happened to Sheriff Hawkins, especially coming from the hands of a very annoying, unnecessary character. The twist just felt really forced and honestly, after seeing the movie all the way through, you kind of feel stupid for not seeing the twist coming from a mile away. I know maybe a lot of people knew that it was coming, but I didn't and then it happened and I was like, Wow. Really? I personally just want to watch a Michael Myers movie. I want to watch Michael Myers be Michael Myers and watch a bunch of town folk try to deal with this unstoppable being. There doesn't need to be a crazy twist or a reason why, it's just Michael Myers and I feel like a big reason for Michael Myers' presence being so cool is because it's so unexplainable. We don't need to know how the bus crash happened. We don't need to know that someone assisted Michael Myers. It's just weird and unnecessary and I feel like it clouded the story up when we could have just had Michael's bus crashed. We don't know why it crashed, but it did. Now he's on the loose. Here you go. Number two, better gore. Now the effects in Halloween 2018 were all great. I absolutely loved some of these kills. The head bash to the next stab was fucking awesome. I absolutely love the bathroom scene where Michael just uses brute force to destroy two people. I even love the off-screen kills where all we get to see is a mutilated body and we have to use our imaginations as to what exactly happened to make a dude's jaw fall off. But there's one scene in particular, one kill, where we could have gotten a semi-realistic, very graphic, fantastic head stomp and we we didn't. What we got instead looked like a water balloon filled with applesauce and it just really took me out of the movie. Unfortunately, I think that I'm the minority here. I feel like most common folk probably watched that and thought that it was super badass, bro. But I just, I don't like it, man. It's corny. It doesn't fit in with the rest of the semi-realistic, incredibly brutal gore that's in the movie. I personally think that the head stomp in Rob Zombie's H2 was a far better head stomp. Although Sartain's head stomp was just one actual stomp, and in the Rob Zombie film, he gets quite a few kicks in, I think the overall idea is portrayed much better in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. 
We've got this mutilated, stomped in face and head that's just really gross to look at. It's really unsettling and it's very real looking. I imagine that's what somebody's face would look like if they got it stepped on by a brutal ass Mega Man. But instead, in Halloween 2018, we got a head stomp effect that kind of looked like it could be achieved with a cheap mask, a water balloon, and some baked beans. Number three. Now, I know this won't happen. Uh, obviously, it's not going to happen, but it's still something that I would like to see. No more Lori. God damn, I am done with Lori. I really, really do genuinely wish that she had died in Halloween 2018. And honestly, she should have in that door scene where Michael has her up against the door. Clearly, this dude knows how to drive a car without ever being taught, so he's smart. And between 1978 and 2018, he's been shot more times than 50 Cent. But you're telling me that he's all of a sudden so dumb that he puts his hand on the end of a shotgun? That really, really doesn't make sense. And it was just a cheap way to get him to drop her. And she very clearly should have died right then and there. He would have never grabbed the end of the shotgun and with his inhumane strength we just saw him literally blow a guy's head up with his foot he would have been able to easily break her neck or crush her bones or something he would have killed her right there but the movie's got a movie so we get blown off fingers michael and then some more battling but anyways Lori should be over and done i think she's played her part and it's time to pass the torch off to the next two women in the franchise but now i know that we have to sit through another Lori film and i'm just not really excited for that again i just want to see michael myers doing michael myers stuff I don't really care about a final girl anymore. And I really can't believe that anybody else is either. I get that it's vital to have a final girl for a horror film, but I think Lori's time as the final girl is over. It should have been over in the second film, and now we're getting a third film, and she's probably going to be in the fourth film. It's just weird, and I feel like... I don't even know how to explain this one. When I go watch a horror movie that has a slasher villain, I am going for the slasher villain. I thought that everyone else did that too, but apparently that is not the case. Number four, no Lori, again. And the reason that I say this is because I feel like having Lori in so many films and making her Michael's main target really, really defeats the purpose of ever getting rid of H2 in the first place. When Halloween 2018 came out, it was made very clear that they were doing away with everything past 1978. There would be no more Michael Myers, Laurie Strode, brother and sister storyline. One of the first things you saw in one of the first trailers was them diminishing that rumor. It was just a rumor some people made up to feel better. So why does Michael continue to get tangled up with Laurie? I feel like it's just, it should be over by now. Yeah, the story makes sense of him getting tangled up with her in Halloween 2018, but why a third film? They might as well be brother and sister again if Michael's going to be focusing this hard on Laurie Strode. Again, Michael is now not a crazy person that just kills anything that gets in his way. He is specifically after one person and he's killing people along the lines to get to her. That just doesn't sit well with me. I think enough is enough. All right, and last but not least, coming in at number five, I would like to see the fan service toned down a bit. I am a firm believer that less is more, and I am all for fan service, but a lot of the fan service that was done in Halloween 2018 seemed super forced and unnecessary and borderline cringy at times. Specifically, this one drives me fucking nuts. Lori coming out of the pantry and saying, Happy Halloween, Michael. The shot looked fucking terrible, like the lighting was just too good, and it just looked fucking weird and photoshopped and edited and not natural at all, and I did not like it. This scene was the total opposite of what made Michael coming out of the closet in 1978 so cool. I just realized that I said Michael came out of the closet in 1978. Good for you, Mikey. But yeah, the shot in Halloween 2018 where she comes out of the pantry just looks fucking corny. I can't explain it, but I'm sure that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. At least I hope so. It was definitely a do your thing cuz moment in the film for me, and it made me cringe something fierce. Happy Halloween, Michael. <laughs> If you guys know what moment I'm talking about, then I'm sure that you understand what I'm saying. I saw that moment in theaters also, and I never want to go through that again. Another callback that was really strange to me was Lori falling off of the balcony and then disappearing. I understand what the movie was going for, but it just wasn't performed correctly here. Not only did it feel forced, but it also just didn't make much sense. Loomis is the one that saw Michael disappear, so the only way that this scenario would actually make sense is if Michael is the one that sees Loomis disappear, but clearly Loomis is deceased both on screen and off screen, so it's not possible. Anyways, my point is, fan service is great if it's utilized correctly, 
and not shoved down your throat, and I definitely feel like Halloween 2018 shoved some fan service down our throat. Like I said, I do enjoy subtle nods. I loved seeing the trick-or-treaters wearing the H3 mask so casually. I also really enjoyed seeing the gas station and bathroom scenes kind of melded together as a nod to H4 and H2O. But I truly do feel like this type of thing is a very quality over quantity type thing, and I would much rather see a couple nice nods over 15 of them that are very forced. So these are the five things that I want to see from Halloween Kills. Make sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree, if you disagree. Let me know what your list is. I'm definitely looking forward to checking those out. And that will be that for this video. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Say no to drugs and alcohol, and until next time, we will see you later.